Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to continue our discussion, our series and YouTube playlist, where we're talking about a pretty amazing feature in Microsoft Office. And specifically, we're going to look at Microsoft Excel. And it's a feature that allows you to automate what can be some very tedious and time-consuming tasks when you're working in Excel and if you've got multiple spreadsheets and you're trying to analyze and chart data. Um, there is an amazing feature in Excel, and that's called VBA, or Visual Basic for Applications. And what it is, is an included programming language and integrated development environment, like you see here, this window is basically an IDE that allows you to write code called macros in Visual Basic and operate on the spreadsheets, the worksheets, the cells, the charts, and all the different aspects of your workbook in Excel and automate a lot of processes. Now, in the previous video, we developed this very simple code that will allow us to automatically select two columns in our spreadsheet. And you can see our spreadsheet here, and it will automatically take those two columns and chart them in a chart that you can specify the format of and what type of chart and so on. Now, one of the challenges here is we wrote this code in the IDE, and to run it, you have to go into the IDE, press this Run button, and then it will bring up a window that will tell you, okay, select the first column, we select it, hit OK, select the second column, we select it, hit OK, and then what it does is it does a chart of those two columns worth of data. And that's fine, however, if you're going to have an application that other users are going to use, you're probably not going to want them to have to open up this IDE and hit the Run button. It would be nice to have maybe a button on your spreadsheet that you can say, okay, press this button and we'll automatically run this code in your IDE and it will automatically do the charting. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at some of the very amazing features in VBA in Excel and Microsoft Office that allow you to have what you may be familiar with if you do other programming languages, like uh, C Sharp, Visual Studio of Windows Forms, where they have what are called user interface controls that are nice controls like buttons and text boxes that allow the user to interact with, in this case, your spreadsheets and to do things automatically. Now, we touched on that a little bit in the previous video, where we have these two lines of code in our main subroutine. And what they do is they call an application.input box, which is those input boxes you saw when you ran this, that tell the user to select the first column and the, and the second column. And then it returns the range of data that was selected. So you already know a little bit about one of the methods that you can use to uh, display an input box to the user and get data. Uh, it turns out there are a number of other ways, and we're going to start looking at that in this video. So um, what we would like to do in this, instead of having to expect the user to go into this uh, IDE and press the Run button, wouldn't it be nice if we had something that's similar to like a... Uh, Visual Studio Windows Forms button here that the user could press the button and do the charting instead of having to go into the IDE. Well, it turns out that is also built into VBA in uh, Microsoft Office and Excel in particular. Not only do they have buttons, but they have text boxes, they have images, they have other types of user controls that you can access. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to do that in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this chart and let's see if we can figure out some of the ways that we can add a button to this to have the button run this code in our IDE. Well, like I say, there's a number of ways. The first thing we can do is we can go to the Developer tab and we can say Insert and you can see we get this menu and it's got two groups of controls. One is a Form Controls and one is an ActiveX control. Now you might think, ooh, ActiveX, that sounds cool and exciting, let's do that. 
Well, maybe, maybe not. Um, as with most things in the real world, it depends. Depends on what you need. So you can see that if you hover over this, we've got a button control. And the next one, we've got a combo box. We've got a check box. We've got a spin button. We've got a bunch of different controls under form controls. And you might notice we've got some very similar controls. We've got another button under ActiveX. So let's take a look at the difference between those. And we're going to start out with a button. We're going to select a button in the form controls. And all I have to do is I have to go here and drag. And immediately I get this window that says, hey, we need to assign a macro to that button. And it starts out with the button click. And that is an event. But we don't want that. We want this main subroutine that we have already defined. So I'm going to select main and hit OK. And what it has done is it said, OK, here's our main subroutine that's going to ask for the data and then do the chart. And we've assigned that to this button. So now what I can do is I can click on that button. And there it is. It immediately runs that main subroutine and says, select the first column. OK, select the second column. And then it does the chart on top of our worksheet. So it's a really, really nice way to very quickly assign a macro to a button and have it run. Now, you can also do a lot of other stuff, but this is a really nice way to assign a macro. Now, let's take a look at the other alternative, which was this ActiveX control. So I'm going to go in here, go to ActiveX, the command button. And I'm going to draw that out. And you notice it doesn't ask for a macro. And this is one of the uh, features of this ActiveX control that you may or may not want. Um, it turns out it's a little bit more difficult with this ActiveX control to tell the button what you want to happen when you click the button. It's not an automatic thing where it says, hey, what macro do I run? So what you have to do is you have to take this button, select it, and then go to View Code. And what it will do is in your IDE, it will now tell you we've got the Command Button 1, and we're looking at the Click event up here. And we've got Private Sub Command Button 1 Click. So what it does, instead of immediately asking you for a macro to run, it says, OK, I'm going to give you the code for the Button 1 Click event, and you have to enter what you want this thing to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab over and say, OK, run this main subroutine. Now keep in mind, you don't want to put parentheses. Just put the subroutine you want it to run. And now what I can do is I can go back here. And you can first see that you're in automatically in design mode. You want to get out of design mode. And you want to go into operation mode so this button will be enabled. We deselect that, and now we select the Command button. You can see it does exactly the same thing. However, it required a few more steps. Now, the ActiveX is different in that it's newer and has more features. However, um, because of the more features, it may be more difficult to get things done. So there's a trade-off, as with anything. You may just like the ability of the, uh, the standard form control button to automatically ask for a macro. Or you might like this command button that's got more features. So it's up to you. So now let's say we want to get a little fancier. We've got our command button that does the charting. Let's say we want to take it a step further. And instead of just taking this data as it is, let's say we want to allow the user to modify this data or customize this data first, and then we'll do the charting. So what we can do is we can have the command button bring up a form that will ask for some user input. In this case, these two columns are charting some just some equations. Assuming this A column is time values, it's charting some sine waves. What we can do is we can have the command button bring up a form and says, hey, what frequency do you want to calculate in the sine wave? What magnitude and that kind of thing. And then after it's got the user input, it can update these values and then go through and chart it. So how would we do that? Well, the first thing we'll do is go back to our IDE. And you can see in our project, we've got our three spreadsheets, our default spreadsheets, our workbook. And then we've got the module here. 
that is basically asking the user to select the columns and do the charting. What we want to do is we want to add to that and we want to add a form. So I can right click on this project, insert, and we've got two choices of user form, module, or class module. What we want to do is we want to add a user form. So now we have added this form and we can modify it. So for example, it's got a label, it's got a text box, it's got a combo box. If you're familiar with C Sharp Windows Forms, it's very, very similar stuff. You got images, you've got spin buttons. So what we can do is we can use this user form as a way for the user to enter the parameters of these equations we're going to calculate. And then after that, once it's all done, we can chart it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a label and click on it and I can move this. And what we want to do is you want to look at the properties of this label. So I'm going to go to view properties window and you can see here all the properties we can access of this label. The name, and I'm going to change it to LBL frequency and I'm going to go to the caption which is what it shows here and I'm going to call it frequency with a colon and now you can see it, it updates that. I can change the font. This is very similar if you've done any um, Windows forms. It's very similar. You can set this, go up to size 12 and now we got the frequency. And what I can do is now go and add a text box and we'll do the same thing. We'll set the font size 12. And now we've got a very basic form. Let's see if we can run this and we'll hit the run button. And this is the form we want to get when we hit this command button. We can enter the frequency and it will recalculate these. So now what we can do is we can go back to our worksheet and we've got this command button. And we can go into design mode and we can right click and view code and it's going to give us this and what we want to do is we want to now specify that this is going to run our user form one so we'll say user form one dot and you can see we've got this help here we can go to show now we can go back to our application get out of design mode and hit the command button it brings up this form. So now we've got a nice way to add a user form that we can, and we can get real fancy with this. We could add input and have it update these values. So now let's say we want to take whatever data that the user enters into that form for the frequency, and we want to access it in our subroutine. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to double click on this user form to get back to the user form. And one of the nice things about this is, as in uh, Windows Forms control, you can double click on this control and it will automatically bring you into an event handler that it generates that allows you to add code to it. So I double clicked on that. Now we have private sub text frequency change and that's the event handler. And what I can do is I can paste in some code and I'm going to say the frequency value is user form one text frequency dot value and then I'm going to run this main subroutine that asks the user to check and then does the charting. So now let's look at this event handler and think about it and see if there's any problems with this. Basically this says whenever the text in this text frequency, this text box is changed, it will go through grab the value that's in the text box and then run the program, whatever program we're going to have to update the data and chart it. Now, if you think about it, let's go back to the user form one. You probably don't want to have a text change event handler initiate the process. You probably want the user to get done with whatever they're doing because they might make a mistake and have to delete it and retype it or they're doing multiple characters and it might generate an event after the first character and, and no, they want like three characters for the frequency. So it's probably a lot better to instead of using the text change event that we add a button that allows the user to say, okay, I'm done with entering data, go through and do the calculations and chart it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here to the AB and we're going to add a command button 
And the event handler for this is going to be what we use to recalculate the values and chart it. So we're going to double click on that. Now we've got the command button one click. And what we can do is we can move this code into that. And now we have the beginnings of the code we're going to need. We're not done yet because this has some problems still. But now we know that we're going to wait for the user to finish to enter the um, OK, and then we will calculate. So now back in the user form one, what we're going to do is we're going to modify this button. We're going to change the name of it to BTN OK. And we're going to change the caption or the text and have it say OK. And keep in mind, we can add additional labels and text boxes to allow the user to change other values. But here we're going to just go back to this command button click and update this code to make it run. Okay, so I think that's it for this one. If there's interest, we might go into part two and talk more about uh, user forms. Uh, if you're liking these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.